Could you please introduce yourself and the course you teach? Hi, my name is Lori Reitzman. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Molecular and Integrative Physiology in the School of Molecular and Cellular Biology. I am teaching um, in two courses this semester, or in the two semesters, I teach in systems physiology, but the course I'm going to also be telling you about today is endocrinology, MCV 413. Could you give a brief overview of what's covered in your course? Yes, endocrinology is defined as um, the study of hormones, and so really what this course entails is all different aspects of hormone regulation, hormone action in both normal physiology and disease. So briefly we cover um, some of the main hormones that you've probably heard of before. We cover thyroid hormone, growth hormone, uh, cortical um, adrenal cortex stimulating hormone, um, and we also cover things like gastrointestinal hormones. We do a whole section on diabetes and metabolic regulation, and then finally we cover um, fertility, things related to um, the differences between males and females in terms of hormones as well. Okay, what kind of background knowledge does a student need to take this course? Um, the student really just needs to have um, some of the MCB core curriculum under their belt, We'll go fairly in depth into these hormones, but you'll get most of the information you need throughout the course. We do talk quite a bit about hormone signal, but we spend several lectures at the start just describing signaling pathways, so you'll get quite a bit of information. So that being said, um, there's certainly some courses that might help with the material in this course. Systems Physiology covers some of the same material at a little bit shallower level, so this, if you were kind of interested in the endocrine portion of that course, the endocrinology class, taking it in full detail, is a good way to go. How do the topics covered in your course apply to current research, medical, scientific advancements? So with this course, because it's an upper-level MCV course, I try to be very cognizant of knowing how, what the current um, state-of-the-art research is on the topics. So I frequently in lecture try to incorporate any new research findings and I really try very hard to make sure that the medical um, relevance of everything we're studying is well displayed. I do a lot of interactive questions on medical diagnosis related to hormone disorders, so students get a chance to kind of see in action how the hormones work in the body. What other classes in MCB go well with the content you are teaching? Um, so I mentioned that MCB 402, the um, Systems and Integrated Physiology class, goes well with this content, but there are two other classes that I could recommend if you're interested in this topic. One is Mechanisms of Human Disease, it's a relatively new course, and this course covers all different aspects of disease physiology. And then if you're really interested in metabolism, there's also a very um, specialized course taught by Dr. Jung Sook Kim Kemper. Who it's like a whole course on metabolism. So if you're interested in diabetes and just in general metabolism, that would be a great course to think of as well. What should a student do if he or she is having trouble with your course? So generally speaking, um, with this course, there is usually a team-taught course with three different instructors. So I know for the portion that I teach, I'm very happy for students to come to my office to make an appointment to see me. I usually don't have a set office hour because I find that people usually don't show up to that office hour, so I find it much easier just to, um, if students have problems, just to email me and I will schedule a time to meet with them. The TA that, te that um, works with this class is usually also someone that's an advanced endocrinology PhD student who has good information as well. So if, for instance, like there's a very rare chance that I might not be available in a given week, this TA is usually also very good at helping with answer questions. But I really want you to learn the material, so come talk to me. Do you work for a laboratory? If so, how does a student go about conducting research for credit? I'm a PI of a lab here on campus. You're in my office, and this is kind of the, the one room in the room of my lab. We study pituitary gland development. And I frequently take undergrads to do research. Um, generally speaking, there are students that I've had some interaction with in some fashion, either from class or from meeting them at a seminar or another professor has had them and knows them and I get a chance to interact with them. I do occasionally also respond to um, general email requests, but um, I definitely like having undergrads involved in the research, but I wish I had more space in my lab to take as many as needed research. Okay, last question. What is one thing a student going into your class should know about you? Um, I guess one of the most important things to know is that I really want you to be excited about the material and I want to be teaching you something you don't know. 
And so what I'd really like it to be as interactive as possible, I like to have the students talk during class and ask questions, and I want to know what you don't know, what you like, what you don't like. So communicate with me and I will, I will change the lectures if I can in the semester, or it helps me to change the class for the next semester. So I love feedback.